the 2024 presidential election is about accountability. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have put us all in an extremely precarious position by implementing a wide range of reckless policy measures. And now Kamala is asking the country for a promotion from vice president to commander in chief. Her campaign messaging is all about hope, joy, optimism, and supposedly ushering in a new era of leadership. But the reality of her governance has been quite hellish and painful for millions of us in this great country. People can't afford groceries right now. People are skipping meals in order to pay their bills. People are working multiple jobs just to survive. Not to save, not to get ahead, just to survive. And the last thing our fellow citizens need right now is another four years of economic turmoil and political corruption. We also don't need someone who supports open borders and migrant crime. Which brings us to Kamala's disastrous town hall with CNN yesterday because she was asked about her track record on the border and outright refused to answer the question. Let's talk about this compromise bill you, that you want to pass if you're elected. You said that's going to be a priority. It includes $650 million in funding for the border wall. That's something Republicans wanted. That was part of the compromise. Under Donald Trump, you criticized the wall more than 50 times. You called it stupid, useless, and a medieval vanity project. Is a border wall stupid? Well, let's talk about Donald Trump and that border wall. <laughs> so remember Donald Trump said Mexico would pay for it? Come on, they didn't. How much of that wall did he build? I think the last number I saw is about 2%. And then when it came for time for him to do a photo op, you know where he did it? In the part of the wall that President Obama built. But you're agreeing so to a bill on. that would earmark $650 million <laughs> to continue building that we, wall. I, I pledge that I am going to bring forward that bipartisan bill to further strengthen and secure our border. Yes, I am. But and I'm going to work across the aisle to pass com a comprehensive bill that deals with a broken immigration system. The immigration system isn't broken. It's just being overrun. She and Biden have let well over 10 million people illegally enter this country in less than four years. And our immigration system would never be able to handle such a massive and rapid influx of people, regardless of the changes that we could make to it. And no immigration system around the world could ever do that. It's just unsustainable. It's untenable. It's a mission that's impossible. We also, by the way, had a secure southern border when President Trump was in office. And we could get back to a place of security if his successful policies, such as Remain in Mexico, were to be implemented once again. It's not rocket science, guys. We're not trying to cure cancer here, okay? We can't have a country without borders. It's as simple as that. And her one job as Biden's partner in crime was to stop the influx of people and get this border under control again. But she couldn't even manage to do that. Instead, she spent her time in office demonizing President Trump and spreading nasty, nasty lies about him his, and his supporters. And she's doing the exact same thing on the campaign trail because she doesn't have any other cards to play. She can't run on her track record. She doesn't have any big accomplishments or achievements to tout. And she has become so desperate for a win here that she accused President Trump of being a fascist last night. I think we all know to your point, Anderson, it is close, but there are undecided voters who clearly by being here have an open mind, want to talk in a way that is about grounded in issues and fact. And when they hear these facts, I think it, it compels a lot of people to be concerned about the future of our country with Donald Trump at the lead. You've quoted General Milley calling Donald Trump a, a fascist. You yourself have not used that word to describe him. Let me ask you tonight, do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Wow. Just wow. Well, if she really thinks he's a fascist, then she doesn't know the first thing about fascism or about President Trump. And ironically, she's much more of a fascist herself, considering the way that she even became the Democrat Party's presidential nominee by forcing Biden out of the race long after he won their primary election earlier this year. Her campaign acts like that's democracy at work, but it isn't. Objectively speaking, it is not democracy at work. And that's why we can't let Harris get away with such an insulting move. One of the other things, of course, that was showing last night in this town hall was her tendency towards narcissism. For example, Anderson Cooper asked her if there are any mistakes that she made in the last four years in politics or outside of politics that she's learned from. And her mind was a total blank. 
I don't think I've ever heard the former president admit a mistake. A lot of politicians don't. Is there something you can point to in your life, political life or in your life in the last four years, that you think is a mistake that you have learned from? I mean, I've, I, I've made many mistakes. Um, and they range from, you know, <laughs> if you've ever parented a child, you know you make lots of mistakes, too. Um, in my role as vice president, I mean, I've probably worked very hard at making sure that um, I am well versed on issues. And um, I think that is very important. It's a mistake not to be well versed on an issue and feel compelled to answer a question. Right, that's what I thought. Turns out narcissists don't think that they make mistakes. That's the bottom line here. Now, one more important point that came up yesterday is the question of her authenticity. Kamala has rightfully been called a chameleon on the campaign trail for constantly changing her philosophy, worldview, policy positions, and even her accent, depending on who she's addressing. She's also made some major policy flip-flops since entering this race, including when it comes to the issues of a border wall, as we just saw, and fracking, which she once vowed to be totally against at a different campaign event back in 2019, when she briefly and unsuccessfully ran for president against Joe Biden. One of the attendees raised these issues directly with her, and her response left a lot to be desired. So welcome to Delco. Thank you. Um, Thank here you. in Delco, we, uh, we pride ourselves on being authentic. Yeah. And um, much of what we have seen, been say, have seen, much of what you've been saying with regard to issues like law and order and fracking uh, reflect a more centrist view than what people are used to hearing from Kamala Harris. Um, leaving some voters to wonder about the authenticity of your current, more moderate positions. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how your positions have shifted and why? Sure, and thank you. Um, so, first of all, on fracking, I've been very clear. We kind of dispensed with this in 2020. I am not going to ban fracking. I did not as vice president. In fact, as vice president, I cast the tie-breaking vote that now has opened up more fracking leases. My value on the issue of what we need to do to invest in a clean energy economy and a clean energy future has not changed. But frankly, I now have the experience and perspective of having been vice president for almost four years. I've traveled the country. I know that we can invest in a clean energy economy and still not ban fracking and still work toward what we need to do to create more jobs and create U.S.-based jobs in a way that will be globally competitive. On the issue of law and order, as you mentioned, I think there's just a whole lot of misinformation, to be honest with you. I have personally prosecuted very serious crime. It's how I started my career. I spent most of my career as a prosecutor, not in Washington, D.C. And as my first priority, had and, and remains as a first priority to me, the safety of the American people. So that has not changed. And sadly, I think that there's a, a bit of misinformation, if not more than a bit. Um, but I'm glad that you raised the subject so that I can address it. You, but, but, I, but, but, but just if you don't mind, just let sure. me just finish. Yikes. Talk about a gaffe that can almost make Joe Biden look good for a change. <laughs>